What's up my common comrades? With the new MK1 game hitting consoles, we need to talk about one of the game's most iconic characters, Liu Kang. Especially because in the new game he has seemingly taken on the powers of Raiden, essentially making him a god who will be rebooting the MK timeline. In fact, we had a chance to play the new game and fight as the new high-powered Liu Kang, so I'll give you guys my full take and review of the game on the back half of this video. But for Liu Kang, he is easily the most loved protagonist in the MK franchise. He first appeared in the original Mortal Kombat game in 1992 and was created by Ed Boon and John Tobias. Bias. Now you know how we do here, we always have to start with the character's real world history before talking about his or her fictional origin story. In Liu Kang's case, he was originally supposed to be a Japanese character named Minamoto Yoshisun. But according to Mortal Kombat co-creator John Tobias, during production of the first game, the Midway staff, quote, just couldn't deal with the name. So the character was renamed to Liu Kang as a nod to actor Gordon Liu, who starred in the 36 Chambers of Shaolin film from 1978. But that wasn't the only thing that was changed. He was then changed from Japanese to Chinese and was originally supposed to be just a traditional monk having a bald head and wearing robes. But the actor who played Liu Kang in the first two Mortal Kombat games, Ho Sun Pak, was like, yeah, I'm not shaving my head though. This resulted in the character being loosely modeled after Bruce Lee, now being depicted as a renegade monk who grew his hair back. Tobias would also draw inspiration from Bruce Lee's 1953 Enter the Dragon film for Kang's backstory. Over time, Liu Kang would arguably become the most important character in the Mortal Kombat universe, which was pretty much established by the third game, because in 1995, in an interview with MK co-creator Ed Boon, he said in regards to putting Liu Kang in the third game, it'd be like doing a part three of Star Wars and not having Luke Skywalker in there. You don't do that. In any case, Liu Kang is one of the few characters to appear in every main MK game as a playable character. He's Earthrealm's greatest warrior and the main hero of the franchise. Dude literally became the champion in the first Mortal Kombat tournament he entered. But let's go back. Earthrealm lost control of the Mortal Kombat tournament when Goro defeated the great Kung Lao. At this point, Kung Lao's brother, Liu Kang, was summoned by the White Lotus to go to Shang Tsung's island. If you're wondering what the White Lotus or White Lotus Society is, they're an organization founded by by Raiden and the Shaolin Order of Light. Anyway, he's chosen by them to fight in the tournaments and return it back to the hands of the Shaolin. The crazy part is Kang only has one chance because at this time of entering the tournaments, Shang Tsung had already won nine consecutive tournaments with his champion Goro. And if they could take home a 10th win, this would allow Shao Kahn to invade Earthrealm. Now, as we know, Liu Kang is not alone in being Earthrealm's protector. He's aided by his friends Johnny Cage and Sonya Blade. But in the end, Liu Kang is the one who defeats Shang Tsung, forcing Goro and Shang Tsung back to Outworld. Now, I've never personally been in a physical physical combat situation like that, but I'd imagine it'd make you pretty freaking hungry. In fact, it's making me hungry just thinking about it, or maybe it's because I was just eyeballing my lunch, a cheesy bacon ranch chicken meal from Factor just before coming in the studio. Yeah, it's as good as it sounds. If you're not familiar with today's sponsor, Factor, they offer fresh, never frozen meals that are ready in just two minutes, so all you have to do is heat it up and get your grub on, which is crazy helpful for me because like many of you, my schedule can get pretty crazy and I often have to eat on the go, especially heading into the fall and the holiday season. Thankfully with Factor, I can keep my fridge stocked with delicious and nutritious meal options so I don't have to think about what I'm doing for lunch. That's right, you get to skip the trip to the store and all the cook work because it's all delivered fresh to your door. It's glorious. And did I mention they have great breakfast options and a bunch of other add-ons as well? Like Factor smoothies and juices, which are perfect for an easy pick-me-up throughout the day or to even couple with your Factor meal. I'm telling you, you want to try Factor for yourself. Just head to factor75.com or click the link below and use code VARIANT50 to get 50% off your first Factor box. Again, that's factor75.com or click the link below and use code variant50 to get 50% off. Okay, we've covered Liu Kang's origin, but there's been so many dang Mortal Kombat games that it would take forever to explain to you everything Liu has been through throughout the Mortal Kombat universe. So for the rest of his story, we're just going to narrow it down to what you need to know leading up to Mortal Kombat 1. The next important or relevant part for the character starts in Mortal Kombat Deadly Alliance. In this game, it's revealed that Quan Chi is responsible for the death of Scorpion's clan and family. This obviously pisses off Scorpion greatly, so fueled with rage, he goes after Quan Chi. Kinda as we see in the Mortal Kombat Legends Scorpion's Revenge movie. Anyway, Quan Chi is able to escape Netherrealm and Scorpion, at which point he makes a deadly alliance with Shang Tsung. He basically tells Shang Tsung that he can give him an endless supply of souls in return for transporting the souls of defeated warriors into his army. The problem is both Liu Kang and Shao Kahn are not gonna want this to happen. So of course they must be taken off the board, and because of this deadly alliance, Shang Tsung is finally able to defeat and kill Liu Kang, who by the way is not a playable character in this game. This then leads us to Mortal Kombat Deception, where Liu Kang returns but as an evil zombie. And then that leads to Mortal Kombat Armageddon, where in order to prevent Armageddon at the end of the game, Raiden sends a message to his past self warning him of this impending doom. Which kind of reboots the franchise going into the 2011 Mortal Kombat game where Liu Kang is back yet again. Because reboot, hence, no more zombie. In this game, Liu Kang wants to go after Shao Kahn, but Raiden insists that he shouldn't. This leads to a confrontation between the two of them, with Liu Kang attacking Raiden with a fireball. But 
Raiden being the god of thunder and lightning electrocutes him, accidentally killing Liu Kang. As Liu Kang dies, he blames Raiden for all the hero's deaths, with Raiden regretting what he just did, asking Kang for his forgiveness. From here, we go on to Mortal Kombat X, where we see Liu Kang is now a revenant working with Quan Chi. As such, he's now incredibly bitter for his own death and the loss of innocent lives. Which is crazy, because as we all know, before this, Liu Kang was a very peaceful-centered soul, but not so much in Mortal Kombat X. As the game goes on, Quan Chi is killed by Scorpion, at which point Liu Kang pledges his allegiance to Shinnok, who was summoned by Scorpion. For those of you who don't know, Shinnok is a fallen elder god of death. Once Shinnok is defeated by Casey Cage and Raiden, Liu Kang and Katana become the rulers of Netherrealm. This would then bring us to Mortal Kombat 11, where Katana and Liu Kang have both become even more corrupt due to the prolonged exposure and influence of Shinnok. Long story short, by the end of MK11, Raiden and Revenant Liu Kang fight. Raiden wins, much like he did their first battle, but instead of killing Liu Kang this time, he effectively merges with him, making Liu Kang a god with fire and lightning. With this power, he defeats Kronika, a Titaness and Keeper of Time. So now with the power of Raiden and being able to manipulate time, Liu Kang seeks out to create a brand new peaceful timeline, erasing all the losses people have suffered over the years, and this is where Mortal Kombat 1 picks up, with Liu Kang doing exactly that. There's obviously a lot more to it, but that's the super simplified version of plot points that you need to know going into the new game. Now this wouldn't be a history of episode if we didn't at least touch on powers and abilities, so let's get into it. Liu Kang's most iconic move is by far his bicycle kick, which as we all know is when Liu Kang flies across the damn screen, kicking his opponent several times like he's riding an invisible bicycle midair. Another one of his iconic moves is his dragon fire throw, a fiery flame in the shape of a dragon that he throws across the screen out of his hands. This dragon actually looks very reminiscent to the MK logo. He could also shoot normal fireballs out of his hands, and he's got Shaolin Flame, where he collapses his fists together, engulfing them in flames. Or, you know, let's go all the way to his most current state, where he's reached Thunder God Ascension. This is after he merges with Raiden, where all of his special moves are now modified, causing either lightning or fire effects. Basically, everything he does is now amplified because he's reached Godhood. Then, of course, he's got his fatalities like Deadly Uppercut, Arcade Drop, Fiery Head Club, Sore Throat, which is pretty, I mean, they're all brutal, but especially that one, Belly of the Beast, and Double Dragon. There's no shortage of moves and abilities that Liu Kang can do, as he's the main hero of the series. Okay, so what about the new MK1 game? We played it, and let me tell you initial thoughts, this game was a ton of fun. I will say we didn't get to do the story mode, we only got to do the versus tower, but nonetheless, this game is brutal and classic with the K, Mortal Kombat fashion. One of the things I like most about this game is nothing new or groundbreaking for fighting games or Mortal Kombat, but it's cameo mode. In cameo mode, you're able to select two fighters, your main fighter and then a secondary fighter, which you could tag in at certain times to do special tag teaming moves. The game also isn't too different from previous Mortal Kombat games or even the Injustice games, as the Injustice games are also made by NetherRealm Studios. So if you've played any NetherRealm's fighting game, you're gonna be very familiar with this game. Also, the highlight of this game and the center of this game is Liu Kang in his new God mode, so to speak. And let me tell you, that's the character I personally played with the most, and man, is it fun. You just see all the lightning, the fire, and all around epicness that comes out of Liu Kang. I'm very curious to see how he'll evolve within the actual story, because again, we just played the beta. I'm sure there's more unlockable moves and fatalities we'll be able to use as the game progresses. And let me tell you, the graphics are crazy. We personally played this on a PS5, but all next-gen consoles are comparable, and it looks so beautiful. The motion is good. It's very fluid. I, 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 I love it. I love it. It's the best one yet, which is what you would want from a new game, the latest release in a game franchise. Now, we only got to play the beta for this game, which was just a quick versus tower, but I'm very excited to play the actual story for the game because as we all know, Mortal Kombat arguably has the best story for any fighting game, period. Sure, we all love the fighting, the fatalities and all that stuff, but a big part of what makes the MK universe so great and all the games so great is the story. And this game is rebooting and starting everything from scratch, which is going to be great for a whole new generation and get rid of all those continuity errors and stuff like that. It's always nice to have a fresh start every now and then, kind of just like comic books. But with that said, that brings today's episode to a close. But we want to know, will you be playing this new MK game? And what is your favorite MK game and or character? Let us know down below. I, for one, know I'll be playing this game in full on September 19th. And I hope you guys join me. With that said, we'll see you next time when I talk about all things comics.